Okay, as you might be able to see here if I block up the camera. Right. So yeah, there's just this little LED blinking away. See that LED's blinking. It may be what's so special about this LED that's blinking. Well, we can see a little coil down there. I'll tell you about that in a minute. But what's so special about this LED that's blinking is that it should blink for about over two years. Yep. Yeah. Let's put that light on. Right here. Is a crystal battery, but this is that's a very long duration power cell that should last uh, around a two around two years at the least. Hopefully, it depends on how long this battery lasts. I don't know if it's infinite or what. Let's readjust this. Oops. Sorry, I actually picked the clip off for you. Yeah, this is my battery. You can see in there. I have a mixture. This is a magnesium rod. It's a Piper, a uh, pop copper pipe end cap, and this powder in here. But I melted it down, and it's made of um, a fourth cup, a fourth cup of each of these ingredients mixed ground up and mixed together of salt substitute is also known as no salt Epsom salts yeah Epsom salt salt substitute alum powder and borax toy melting borax so that's how this battery hooked up these little wires coming out and so and in this little outward stand, I just put in this outward stand because it's the best container that I had. Oh, it's not. Probably wasn't the best. Or actually, I guess it was the best, but it's the one that I wanted to use because I had this outward stand with this hole in the top. Well, I didn't know what to do with it, but so in here I have this little circuit, and so what this does is it lets me run this LED. So normally if I would just hook up this battery straight to the LED, this battery puts out about 15 microamps at about a volt and a half of 1.4 volts. So that wouldn't light this LED at all. So what I had to do is I had to make this little circuit. Um, I'll, I'll have a link to Laser Saber's website and a link to an article about how to build this in it has a link to all the parts and stuff. My circuit's a little bit modified from his. I have a, I have a different potentiometer in this switch and stuff. But, and a different transistor he uses. Well, it's, it's the same kind, but it's in a little different format. And I'll talk more about the circuit later, but I'll put a link in the description to Laser Saber's website. He has a bunch of really cool alternate energy stuff there. And I really highly really highly recommend checking it out. And see so yeah, it's just blinking away. And if I see there's this switch on there, and what that does is it shorts this capacitor. If you make the circuit, you have to short the capacitor to get it to work. You either have to short the capacitor up or put a couple hundred ohms on it, a uh, hundred K ohms on it to get it to light up. Or if I turn the switch. See now it's just solid kind of blinking. It has potentiometer. It's kinda I guess it makes it a little bit brighter. But this is just for solid. I need, I need to add a little bit more resistance. But you have to have some resistance on the capacitor. Cause what makes it turn off, the LED turn off, is if the capacitor gets too high of a voltage. So turned all the way down up, it gets to about 0 0.059 volts, I think, and all the and all the way down, it's 0.144. It's a, a 0.1 microfarad ceramic capacitor. In this switch, it just completely shorts it out. That's what this switch does. See, so, yeah, so now it's just the usual blinky. I think this gets a little bit brighter, but I may change it to a potentiometer for efficiency reasons. 
But yeah, so got that circuit. And also, his diagram's a little confusing. So if anyone who sees this video and decides to make this circuit and and the battery, he also has instructions on how to make a battery. This one's a little smaller than the one that he uses. But I have some supplies to make some bigger ones. I gotta work on that. Yeah, but if anyone has his diagrams are kind of hard to follow. So if anyone has any questions on how to make the circuit, just post it down in the comments and I'll try to answer you. I, I usually answer comments. So yeah, so this is, um, let me just take this battery. So yeah, so, over here. Um, I just have these batteries warming by my computer fan because they work better warm. In the copper, it cools a lot quick, quicker. That's why there's copper heat sinks because it has high thermal capacity or whatever. So, uh, I'm these in order. I made them. So, you can make these out of main copper pipe end caps. The mixture that I talked about, the Epsom salts, salt substitute, alum powder, and borax. There's four ingredients, a fourth cup of each. Mix them up, grind them up, melt them in here. And there's different ways you can melt it. You could put the bar in here, and you want to have a little spacer. I just used a bit of balsa wood to space the magnesium and the copper pipe. And you can just fill around, fill the thing around with it, or fill it up, melt it, then put the rod in, or put the rod in, and then melt it. But these two batteries are here are made with aluminum. You can use aluminum or magnesium. This is my first battery that I made. This one puts out like a around a hundred milliamps. The the oh, sorry the amperage decreases the more the battery uses. Well, it goes down and then it goes like a straight curve like a regular battery would, except current and not voltage. This gives off about 0.5 volts instead of the 1.4 volts that the magnesium does. So about the same current, um, a little l lower voltage. I think the extra current is just because there's a lot more stuff in here. And see this one, this is a different thing that I tried. I have a zinc bar bit in here and then aluminum. And I made this one a different way. This one I had the bar, the pipe in, the aluminum pipe. And then I put the stuff in there, I just kind of poured it around and melted it as I went. This one I just melted all the, all the stuff in it, so it was all melted, and then I jammed the, jammed the magnesium, or not the magnesium, the aluminum in it. And then I put the zinc bar in, and if you connect this one and the, these two together, you connect them together, you get around 0.7 volts, because simple batteries are just copper and zinc. And I knew that already, like you can make of copper and zinc lemon juice battery and stuff, or copper and zinc potato batteries, that's the most common. So I stuck some zinc in there to get to try to get a little boost in voltage. And this one's about, I'd say 20 milliamps or so, it's the same as this magnesium battery. My worst battery is this battery, it's magnesium. And I didn't really melt it, you can see that it's still kind of powdery, but it's kind of crusty. That's just because it's like packed in there. I I kind of I had a lot of trouble getting this one to melt. And this one, I made it the same way as this one by melting all the stuff in it and then putting the rod in instead of putting the rod in the melting stuff around it. Because a uh, precaution when making these is that magnesium creates hydrogen when it gets wet, and also and hydrogen is extremely flamm flammable as you know with the Hindenburg and such. See, I don't want to get the magnesium wet, especially since this is high purity magnesium, 99.95% magnesium. And you can find magnesium rods like on eBay and stuff. The big ones, like that one, are a water cooler uh, heater anode rods, I think. And these, I got these at Gallium Source, or and Gallium Source is eBay. They're just, I think, a fourth inch rod, and then you get a bunch of them. I think I have them. Yeah, I have a bunch you can see in there. Maybe it says gallium source. And 
I had a bunch of extra rest of the rods in there. Okay, and this one, it's not filled up a lot, so I don't get as high milliamps as this one. But it's a higher voltage, and you really, I think you need like a higher voltage for that circuit. But I haven't, I haven't really tested it with these. I should probably do that sometime. And this one, this one, I don't, it doesn't give you any milliamps. It's a, a volt and a half, like this one. Volt and a fourth, but no milliamps. This one isn't very good. Yeah, but this is my best one. And I think I'll just take this one. So I'm going to try this aluminum with this circuit here. And in case you're wanting this LED when it's blinking, it draws about 10, 10 microamps. So very little current draw. And also, the crystal material inside this one has expanded quite a bit. Is the LED blinking? Nope. Oh well. I guess this doesn't work. But, yeah. See, that's my crystal power cells. Yeah, there you go. So, long-term energy, not too expensive. It's about a couple dollars per cell once you buy the stuff. And I'll just show you the current on my multimeter. And for my tripod. Okay. And my newest addition to my Virtua game consoles is SNES. Guy guys, it was 26 bucks. Like, almost no yelling. It's sweet. And I also got a bunch of Xboxes. I went in the box, went in there with a bunch of controllers. I'm taking them apart. So that's sweet. And I'm working on a portable PS2 kind of laptop thing. Got some 18650 laptop batteries that I scavenged for free. This is the screen. Right now I'm trying to get the audio to work. I got the video to work off this battery power. And then I just got to get the battery protection circuit, battery charger, and everything. And then find a way to connect it to the PS2. And it should work. Yeah, this is all stuff. I've already gotten into electronics a lot. If you don't know this, but I also I made a bunch of like, these solar chargers. This one's for double A's. I'll make a video on this one soon. I've been meaning to, and then also solar phone charger. I've been since I've gotten into electronics, I've been meaning to make a bunch of videos on it. But hopefully in the near future, I'll make a couple more videos. But um, this video is already, already getting pretty long, and I don't know how long you want to see me ramble on about uh, crystal power cells and such. But it's just a rainy day outside, so figured, why not? So I'll show you this on my multimeter. Come on. Stabilize. There you go. See the current of my current. This is the one that's being power that's powering the LED at the moment. Um it there. Fifteen point nine volts. It's going down. And it went back up 15.6. Well, and also, if you like, if you disconnect these batteries and measure the current, the current will actually go up. Even when it's disconnected from anything, the current goes up. And I think that's pretty amazing that you can actually physically see these things recharging without any external power. And you can look up Marcus Reed crystal batteries. Crystal power cells. He has a really good 
uh, like scientific document thing where you where he shows all the characteristics of it. It's pretty interesting. It's a couple of pages, but pretty good. This one's about seventy. This one, the current doesn't hold as long. So this one's like sixty-two. And it's dropping probably from the multimeter using it up. But this one stays pretty constant. Let's see there. And the voltage. Let me see here. I gotta switch the probe. This is a Craftsman multimeter. It's the model number. Craftsman. I really like this one. The only problem with this one is the battery compartment, the, like the screw broke on mine. And because this is kind of old, we've had it for a while. Well, my dad had it for a while. And when I got interested in electronics, I just used it. And this one's good for crystal power cells because it has micro lamps. Because that's pretty much what all crystal power cells are measured by. Except for the big ones. The big ones, you can get like milliamps out of them. Like, you can get like 300 milliamps out of those. Of course, it decreases. And like, it decreases kind of quickly as you start using it, but it levels out. Like a regular battery curve. Makes it in current, not voltage. And you can short these out because uh, I don't really know about current sources and voltage sources, but I think they're like solar panels and that they're a current source. And see the voltage 5.4 almost exactly. And the voltage on the magnesium one that is still powering the thing. Yes, hmm. Three volts. See, I know you disconnected it. Let's see at the voltages now. Yeah, one volt. But see, look. You see that recharging? The voltage is going up. Look, it's disconnected. I disconnected the positive. Hey, I just disconnect the whole thing. Just the preview. You disconnected. There you show you the voltage again. Volts is going up, not connected to anything, and the volts is increasing. And that, now it's going down. Oh, it just went back up. See, the voltage is increasing, not hooked up to anything. I told you these things are pretty cool. So yeah, I think that'll about do it. Yeah, crystal power cells. Uh, yeah, I, would, I would really like if some more people would look into these because the crystal power cell community is kind of small. It's really just the big YouTubers. There's Lynn Motor, John Bedini, uh, Laser Laser Saber, Laser Hacker. He has some really good videos on dual thieves, which can light like light bulbs. Like that's an LED. Some these are regular bulbs. The kind with the filament in them. You have a nine volt battery called a jewel ringer. This is like a a really low current jewel ringer that he found and came up with. So I'd really recommend checking him out. Lid Motor has some good videos, but Lid Motor he doesn't release like any of his stuff really. Like he doesn't really tell like the schematics on how to make it, but. A laser hacker slash laser saber has his whole website with schematics and everything on how to make all of his stuff, so he's really good. And John Bedini, I haven't looked up looked at his stuff. I know he does power cell, crystal power cells and alternate energy. And there's John Hutchison. I don't know about him. He's kind he kind of seems like a fake, but I guess you can look him up if you really want to. So yeah, it's my crystal power cell. It's been running for about couple of days now just blinking this LED non-stop day and night so yeah thank you for watching and bye bye